I'm brand new to fountain pens ink, so perhaps, sorry, fountain, brand new to fountain pen inks, mixed up my words there, so perhaps I'm naive, but I'm surprised that ink companies don't run quality control tests. Maybe the more expensive inks are quality tested, but in an ideal world, I would think each batch would be checked and adjusted or checked and rebranded if the original hue is impossible to recreate. Are hues really that volatile? Um, so there's a bit of mystery around the whole ink making process. It's very proprietary. Um, there is certainly an element of mystique around how a lot of these inks are made. Um, you know, I think it's the kind of thing that uh, really varies from one manufacturer to another. Um, certainly a smaller boutique manufacturer like Noodlers or Private Reserve or somebody that's just making it out of their house um, could be a very different process from what you would see from like Mont Blanc or Pilot or something like that. Um, so yes, I think with the more expensive brands, you're gonna see more of that quality testing, which is why you really never hear about any hue variants in Pilot or Shizuku. You just don't hear about that. I don't know whether that's like because of the additional process they have. I mean, that's Japanese quality control for you. It's probably part of what you're getting, but I don't know how much of that is built into the price of the ink or if that's just kind of the hell of the way they do it uh, anyway. And that's just how they would do it even if the ink was 10 bucks. Um, I definitely think that uh, there is factors within the raw components going on. You know, it's, it's interesting. I've talked to Nathan uh, of Noodlers. He's the guy that makes them. He makes them all by hand. So right off the bat, Noodlers says, like, there might be some slight batch variation just because of the fact that it's mixed by hand. And there are some inks that Nathan makes that literally are mixed by hand for the intention of batch variation. For example, um, the Noodler's Warden series. He actually mixes those to a slightly different variation. I'm talking about like Bad Blue Heron and stuff like that. He actually mixes those by the bottle because, excuse me, there are um, permanent dye components that are in that ink that he has explained to me act sort of like a combination lock so that if you really wanted to try to match a specific ink on the page to a specific bottle you could technically do that because he mixes every bottle to a different ratio within those permanent components but i don't know how much that affects the color i don't hear a lot of color variation with those specific inks but there are certainly other colors that come about not just noodlers but like any other brand um, where there will be some slight variation from one to another i know specifically with noodlers because because I've talked directly with Nathan about this kind of thing that, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that they're not just like making these dyes, like dye components come from other manufacturers. So there's raw components that they're buying from other manufacturers, you know, and let's be honest, these aren't dyes that are made specifically for the fountain pen ink industry, right? Like these are dye components that are made for a lot of other reasons. It could be, uh, I'm just trying to think of like things where I know they use a lot of dyes, like maybe the printing industry. My parents were in the printing industry for a while. I believe it's a different type of stuff. You're dealing with pigments and stuff, but maybe there's something going on there. Um, certainly like textiles and stuff like that. There's definitely dyes. And those are much, much larger industries than you have with uh, fountain pens. So I think even if you think about like some of the largest fountain pen ink makers out there, um, they pale in comparison to the you know textile mills and stuff like that that are out there that are buying dyes by the train load, you know, versus like the amount of dye that would be used in fountain pen ink. So I think what ends up happening sometimes is you have smaller manufacturers, smaller being very relative to much larger industries in general that are using these dyes. Um, and a manufacturer who makes these dyes may make a slight change and not communicate that to everyone. Believe it or not, that kind of thing happens all the time. Um, so an ink that may have been perfectly stable for five years, all of a sudden changes, they give no notice of any kind, and yes, okay, you could say, well, these ink manufacturers should test and swab every single batch that they make. Um, yes, that's certainly something they could do. It would take a lot of time for that to happen. So, you know, and, and I think it's to the point where like the hues are stable enough where it doesn't warrant all those extra steps or if you do, you have to jack up the price a lot because it's a lot of extra labor to test it that much. 
These are all my speculations, by the way. This is not specific feedback. I've, I've strayed away now from the specific feedback I've gotten from, from Nathan and others I've talked to to generalize a little bit more with my impression, kind of what I know of business and time involved with this kind of stuff. Um, when you're talking about um, you know, manufacturing and quality control testing to that degree, there definitely becomes a law of diminishing returns. So for something as relatively low in price as a bottle of ink, um, and to put in that level of quality control testing over something that's really not that unstable, you're adding a lot of labor to something just to perhaps catch something that might happen only every few years, you know? And uh, it's just not that large of an industry to really be a problem, generally speaking. Now, I think that's why you see it more with larger brands that keep things more stable, like, you know, the Pelicans and Mont Blancs and Pilots and all that kind of stuff, because they are really global brands. Other boutique ink makers, you know, Diamine and Noodlers and Diatramentus and stuff like that, I don't know to what degree they're doing that kind of stuff. I, I really don't know if they are, you know, doing that to, to uh, a great degree or to no degree. Um, I imagine they have their own process they feel comfortable with, but, you know, again, it all comes down to what, what do they have time to do? What, what price are they trying to hit? A lot of these manufacturers are trying to keep the price as economical as possible, so they don't want to go adding more steps than are necessary. And I think, like, across the industry as a whole, the whole ink industry, it sounds like there's a lot of batch variation and problems and stuff like that. And certainly for us, whenever we hear about an ink color discrepancy, we always dive in and try and figure out what's going on going on. And sometimes, you know, ink uh, companies are just having a bad day <laughs> and they make a bunch of stuff that doesn't turn out or a dye component was changed on them. And even though the color looked okay, once it got mixed with the other dyes and reacted, maybe it was did something weird. Sometimes some of these color shifts don't happen right away. But once they have, they mix it in the bottle and it looks fine as it is, but three months later, once it's been sitting in their shop for a while and it makes it to a distributor and then it gets to a retailer, then it color shifts. That's happened before. We've seen that where the manufacturer is like, I did batch test it and it looked fine. And three months later, oh, actually the color shifted because this dye component now reacts differently. And it's a little complicated. There's a bit of chemistry involved with all this stuff. Um, but in general, to kind of summarize it all, um, I think every manufacturer is doing things a little bit differently. In general, I don't think it's happening all that often, but definitely it is frustrated. This is where it really helps to have a retailer or a manufacturer who really stands behind their stuff because sometimes kooky things happen. When they do happen, we'll always make it right. I know that's the approach that we take. It's like, oh, this color shifted? Yep, we'll make it right. Just don't even, don't even worry about it, we'll make it right. 